everyone, it's Neil Ramers, aka Cloud Chief, and I'm actually happy because uh, on Memorial Day I actually was able to get some jumps in. But I was lazy and brought my parachute home without repacking it. So I figured I'd show you real quick how to pack a parachute, sort of. Um, now, officially, don't actually go and pack a parachute and then jump it. Uh, if you're going to do that, make sure you go and learn from a certified rigger, um, which that's how you learn how to pack a parachute is you go learn from a certified rigger. I am not one, so I'm just going to show you, you know, a quick overview of how to do it. But I hope you enjoy this video. Tia, come on. So the first thing you want to do is get your parachute all straightened out so you have your lines all pulled out in your parachute in one area and then your container in the other. These are your steering toggles. I need to get these set. So what I need to do is I pull them down and there's a little like circle here. I take the end of this, slide it in there, pull this to the side and then there's a strap that that goes into. Now that holds the steering toggle. And I just take this extra line and I get it wrapped up so it's there between the Velcro and then just put my toggle there and there now my steering line is set for that. Nope. Oh, and someone's calling me. But they will get the weights. So now I have the steering line set. Now why I have this big computer weight here is to hold this down because I'm going to have to be pulling a lot of tension on it when I get to the parachute. Now I want to take each of these lines, so steering lines, front lines, and then rear lines, and have them with different fingers so they're, you know, the lines are making sure they're not tangled. And then, you know, walk all the way up. Oh, I'm going to have to do that again because i got to set my slider. I have a collapsible slider that uh, I can collapse it so I'm getting less drag with the parachute. It's a performance thing. You don't need to collapse it, but you'll get better performance flying it with less drag. So. The slider is a really nice and important part of your parachute. Um, it helps keep your lines organized and also if your slider sets um, how you have your slider set it will determine how fast or slow your parachute opens unless you're planning on pulling low you should probably set it to open slow so that way you're having a nice soft opening not a real jagged one so let me walk the lines up again now that I got the slider set I got to pull it up. I kind of wanted to, you know, fluff the parachute. Now that I have that step out of one of the lines, why is the one? Oh, that's my steering line. Because you don't really want slack in your lines. So now that I got them all pulled up, pull up, and then have them over my shoulder, and I want to make sure the lines stay tight. Now. I'm going to flip it around so this is actually the front of the parachute and I want to find this is a nine cell parachute so you know how many there are and count each cell so this is one cell two cells three four five six seven, eight, nine. So there's all nine cells. We got them nice and neat. So now I'm going to take them and put them between my leg and just hold them there for now. I pull the slider out and I'm going to do what we call this flaking. Essentially what I'm going to be doing is 
taking all the lines and getting them all in the center and all the fabric pushed out. That way you got all the lines nice and neat in the middle and no fabric to tie it, tangle it all up. So. I need to make sure it's between each line. So there's four sets of lines, like here are my A lines, here are my B lines, and down here are my C lines, and then the way these long ones are the D lines. And as you're, it's going to be hard to see, you can't really see with the camera. It's even hard to see when you're watching someone doing it if you're like right in there because there's just uh, so much going on in here. And these are my steering lines. They're kind of getting in the way. But this is also a pretty big parachute, making it harder to pack. Smaller parachutes are, of course, easier to pack. All right, so I'm happy with the how it's flaked. Now I'm going to bring my slider in. And I'm trying to push it up on all the points. And now I'm trying to make sure that each of these four grommet holes are even. Because if they're not even, then it's going to make for an awkward pack when I put the lines in my pack. But it's all even and level to me. Now that that's there, I want a quarter of the slider. So, like here's one end of it. Here's another end. Go in here, pull this one out. And quartering the slider is again going to set it so it uh, opens slowly. I'm making sure that the slider is coming out because that way it'll kind of get caught in the parachute and it'll take longer for the parachute to open which again makes for a softer landing I like slow openings honestly my parachute takes about a thousand feet to open for when I throw my bridle to you know deploy my parachute I'm generally a thousand feet lower by the time it's fully out and open it's a nice soft landing just gotta make sure you pull high which I do anyway so now Take the wing, fold it over, take this wing, fold it over. Now I'm going to do what they uh, call cocooning. So now, reach down, find, now here's the tail, and it has a warning label. Uh, majority of parachutes have the warning label immediately on the tail. That's what I want to find, the direct middle of the tail. So now I come up, put it there so it's over the slider, and now I pull it out and then slowly tuck in with my knee on that side. Now I'm doing it again on the other side. Basically, I'm folding the parachute over on itself. Meanwhile, making sure I keep the lines here nice and tight so nothing's really happening to them. Now, since I folded the parachute around, I want to take this and I want to wrap it in itself. Now, you can do this just like wrap it like this more than enough. I like to do it more because again, it uh, takes the parachute longer time to open, giving you, again, softer openings, which is what I like. I don't want a neck breaker. <laughs> I'm now going to come up here and just try and get some air out of it. Now you want to take it and you want to very gently. A lot of people will just throw their parachute on the ground. You want to gently put it on the ground, and the reason you want to gently do it is so that the lines and all the work I just did isn't being undone. <laughs> so now uh, we gently put this down. 
I need to get the basically I need to get this parachute into this bag <laughs> so I need to get the parachute as big as the bag <laughs> so now I'm going to very gently pushing the air out of the top and then lay down. Now I want to focus on one side, just getting all the air out. So take my hand. trying to do is I'm trying to get the parachute about as big as the bag is wide. So like width wise. So that way it'll fit in. The first part about this process is, is just how the parachute will uh, it reinflate with air. I have a collapsible bridle. And we should be good, yeah. The line here is blue. There's a string here which would slide in and out. If it's white, it means the bridle is not collapsed. Like here. Because when it's collapsed, there, there's no drag on it. That's why, like I said, a performance issue. But this is what I throw. Like when I want to pull my parachute, I literally grab this, throw this, and as you saw, it's a little mini parachute that creates drag and then it pulls the bag out and opens the parachute up. And that's done. We have the fun step of getting it into the bag. Doggy's sitting here saying, I want my food. As you can see, it's already filling up with air, which is exactly what I didn't want to happen. And basically from this point, I need to just get it in the bag. Easier to pack a smaller chute than it is a big chute. I still have a pretty large rig. sides and enclosed making it much easier to get the rest of this just put in now for these first grommet holes I just put one loop on each of them for every later one you got a double strap them salt a certified rigor on the shoot because every shoot's a little different there is kind of a standard though but ah and my rubber band's broken bag of rubber bands be right back Rubber bands being obnoxious. I should be using the proper way, pushing the blades away from me, not towards me. <laughs> Alright, 
Make sure you're always using proper, uh, you know, way of using scissors and keep the blades away from you. Don't do what I originally did. So now, you take the rubber band, and basically we just loop it on itself, is all we do. So we'll loop here, push it through. Ah. Hi, Tia. You're kind of in the shop. Come here. <laughs> Good puppy. Hi. So now that it's full, just pull it through on itself. Alrighty. Get it in a nice bunch and then double loop it. And you want to make sure when you're doing this that you don't have like too much slack sticking out because then your lines can get tangled up in each other during deployment. They say two to four inches beyond is best. Don't want the you know band-aid pulling on your shoot at all because that'll just cause you know issues and possible tears on your parachute, which of course you don't want. So for your locking stoves, which are these four, the locking stoves, because it's locking the bag closed. These on the end are just for excess. Uh, Excess line. Now it's time to put the uh, bag into my rig. And you want about like 18 inches of line from your from your bag to your. Oh, your um, steering lines. Now I want to get this nice and neat and tucked. Although I can always unstrap and tuck these later better, but obviously you want to get them as nice as possible so you don't have to redo them. These aren't the best that these Velcro ones, a lot of like the newer ones will tuck in. This is an old rig, but it still works just fine. So now I want the lines that are coming in to be nice and neat on the bottom. And then I take my bag and you want to sit it down with your lines on the bottom like this. So it's sitting upright and then you want to slowly roll it so that way the lines are going to be on the bottom of the, the rig so it would be down at the bottom because the rig's going to come up and be wearing it. so you want your lines down here so you tuck it and roll it so it's down there like that so get it tucked in a little bit we got you always want to make sure your slider if you have a collapsible or not slider collapsible um pilot chute because if your pilot chute is, you know, collapsed and it's, uh, you know, not set, when you go to skydive and you go to pull your parachute, you're going to pull this and this is going to be flapping in the wind and it's never going to pull your rig out. So that's why you want to check this like two or three times before you're done packing. That's why I've checked it so many times. Just want to make sure you don't want to get up there and then, uh-oh, <laughs> the chute doesn't work and then you got to rely on your reserve. So, for most rigs, it's you want to do the. There's four holes: bottom, top, left, right. Um, most of them are that way, but there are some that are different. So again, you want to follow, you know, whatever your manufacturer's and then there's a little Velcro here for the string that goes out to the pilot chute like that there because then here's where the closing pin 
By the way, if you ever, a lot of people will wear these as necklaces. If you ever see someone wearing that as a necklace, that means they're a skydiver. So now you know if you see someone wearing that, what that means. Because that's the closing pin, that's what keeps your chute in your rig. So now that that's set, take the closing pin, push it through this loop, and now we're set. Now just to make sure nothing gets worn out, a little trick they showed me so you're not wearing this out, is you want to take your pull-up string, flip it underneath of here, and then pull. Because what it'll do is, it'll pop it out so it's underneath. And then when you pull it out, you're basically pulling out metal on metal rather than metal on the string. So the string is going to last a lot longer considering you're pulling out metal on metal. So that way you're not wearing that out and need that to get replaced on your rig. So, little trick. And then we're still blue. So now the pallet shoots. Good. Now I'm going to take this. And then fold it in half. Now fold it in thirds. Now I want to get it to, you know, it's going to get tucked in here at the bottom. So now fold it again. But before I fold it that time, I want to take this and all this excess slack here, tuck it into the pilot chute. Get a little there and then fold this back on itself and then fold this in half. So there's my pilot chute. Since the parachute's right there, I'm punching it up just to give it more space. Tuck it in. Now I'll take this and tuck that under there. So that's all nice and clean. There's my strut. Flip that under. And then let me clean up the top real quick here. And there we go. And that's how you pack a parachute. Pack a main parachute anyway. Since I don't even know how you pack a reserve, because the reserve's up here. You know, your main's down there. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value out of it. If the zombie apocalypse or something happens, you now know how to pack a parachute for yourself. Um, and until next time, may you have success in all you do.